Okay, so um, we got done with, done with that driveway debacle, and we're now back here in uh, my trailer that I call the Beat Laboratory. People, no, no. So we moved the uh, the rack inside here, and I want to point out that my laptop, which we're going to be recording on, is wired into this rack, and then we're going to stab in these two antennas, and. We're going to talk about some things while these antennas boot. These antennas have a label on the front that is readable even when the antenna is not powered. And that is a very powerful tool. It shows you which antenna has the license. It shows you what the name of the net will be. And the internal programmed IP address of the antenna. So... Um, I can see from the, it's called e-ink and it's brilliant. It's, it almost gets rid of all the need for gaff tape on the outside of the antennas, almost. But uh, I can see on this antenna here that it says I have the standalone license on this one. And you can see they're kind of booting up and I'm going to see the IP address configured in here when this is done booting. Um, I have an IP address giver in here, a DHCP server inside this rack. It's a, the same device that makes Wi-Fi for this rack. And I have internet stabbed into this rack. This uh, port right here is labeled WAN. So if I give this rack internet, internal to here, there's a router and an access point that gives me Wi-Fi command of this rack and also gives out DHCP um, IP addresses. Pretty convenient. Uh, so what I have here is this e e uh, IP address is 10.0.54.4. And so now I'm going to go to the computer and open a new page or a new tab. Let's see, tab, and I'm going to go 10.0.54.4. And I'm going to press enter. This is any web browser, I think. I'm using Chrome. Um, seems to work just fine. I don't know of any that are specifically included or excluded, but the homepage here shows what antennas are attached. Right now, there is two antennas, 54 and 50, or 54.4 and 54.3. Right here, what I can tell you is that this is the decked master and the PTP clock is locked. And this is the label that you will see on the front of the device. And this is the user ID. All right. So I have uh, some profiles that I'm uh, used to running. Uh, default pin for this system and as shipped from the factory is 0000. Okay. And I have, I'm going to upload one of these net configs and um, we're going to kind of zero out this system. So we have, let's do this one right here that says onset services Bolero base config. Uh, it was made February 20th and uh, it is pretty current. It's now been uploaded. What this does is this, uh, gives some underlying characteristics like what antennas should I expect? What audio devices should I expect? What uh, default profiles should I expect? And what party lines should I build by default? What audio channels would be included in those party lines? So let's cruise through what I mean by that right now. On this page, both antennas are detected. In this page, the I.O. device, this NSA-002, is been detected, and it was already in this configuration, so it's attached. I'm not really trying to show you guys how to set up one from absolute default. Um, I think you would be able to reverse engineer a little bit of this from what I, what I am showing you. I'm kind of showing you how my kit goes out and how I expect to hand it off to customers and and then they can take on the configuration from there. So I've already configured this I.O. device to be in this rack, and I have configured 
audio channels on that. So I've configured a cams four wire, audio four wire, stage four wire, event four wire, party line five, which doesn't really have a designation. And then this um, right here shows you what pair, it's, tr it's truck, it's item ID number one, output number or input number six is used for this channel that I'm discussing and it is labeled program. The other side of that is labeled stage announce or ref hot mic, which if a referee was wearing this belt pack, we could record his audio. Okay. This is just part of this default. So, and then we've default, we've, we've said what these audio presentations are named. And then you'll see this very closely aligns with the party lines that are in this default. The de party lines that are in this default are cams, audio, stage, event, that party line five. And then you can see my default has these other love lines or a camera love, uh, audio, stage, event, love. So when I build these defaults, the cams party line would include this audio input output, but the cams love line would not. It would be a second button on the belt pack to uh, let the wireless camera operators talk to themselves. It doesn't really make sense when you talk about it in cameras, but if you talk about it as in like an A2 belt pack, the first button would be A2 and that would include the A1. The second button would be the A2 love line, and that would let the A2s talk to themselves without bothering the A1. And in this way, they can communicate about getting the task done that the A1 is asked for. Okay, so those are my love channels here. And then uh, there's another uh, party line here named button available, which just kind of gives a placeholder for the... Um, fact that the button is available to be used. Maybe it's a prompt. It brings up somebody to ask a question. Hey, this button says it's available. Could I get a so-and-so on there? All right. Let's go to a uh, profile. A profile is the standard configuration that you might give to a someone. These are unlimited, so you can create as many as you want. And I think that's a really good um, starting place for, well, I like to give cameras, camera love, and then a program listen. You don't have to program a belt pack every time for this camera operator. You can grab that profile and give it to him. As a camera operator, this is what you need. I don't care if your camera one, two, three, four, five. This is what you need and it's in the default profile. So let's click on one of these uh, profiles. Let's do cameras, it makes probably sense. And this looks like you would be editing a belt pack, but it's not editing a belt pack, it's editing a profile. So I actually name it a little differently. I actually go here and name one cams profile. So this keeps it in order. This says what we're talking about. And then this reminds me that we are editing the profile and not the belt pack. So we can change the keys. This is a talk and always listen function. It is a momentary button type and it applies to party line number one, cams. This one is the same thing. It is a talk and always listen. It is a momentary and it applies to cam love. And then you can assign the other buttons Let's look at a different instance here. This is a listen. What are we going to listen to? We're going to listen to program. And this is an auto type of button. It is momentary or latching, depending on how you press it. And if I've made any changes, I could apply. All right. So I want to be super cautious here to say it again. If you make a change on a profile, Everyone that's wearing that profile will receive that change. Even 
if you've made belt back level changes, the profile changes will supersede those. So you may want to be very careful about making profile changes after you have handed out the belt packs. After you've handed out the belt packs, if you realize something that needs to be changed, you want to change it on the belt pack pro or the belt pack settings. So let's look at that here. So back here on belt packs, you can, okay, well, there's no belt packs connected. The belt packs will show up here when they are registered to the net. And registering to the net is pretty easy. You can see this one says not registered. And what I'm going to do, you can maybe make out a little symbol there. It looks like a, a radar. Yep. And then you can see that symbol here on the antenna. So we're not registered, right? We're going to go up to an antenna. We're going to hold it there. And then, boom, we're registered. It's just as easy as that. Now, this is a setting. This is a permission that I have left open. Um, but it's, uh, it is that easy. So back in the software, you can see that we have one belt pack connected. It has been given an ID of zero, and it's been given a profile of 98, no access. Let's press direct edit. And now you can see that I can change these fields directly on the, uh, on the home screen or the, the grouping screen. So let's name this one camera one. Let's give it an ID of one, and let's make him a CAMS profile. So I'll pause on there real quick. You can see these profiles are uh, in order. You can see that I've kind of done some basic or boilerplate work here for you. It's currently on zero. Or I'm sorry. It's currently on 98, no access. I'm going to give it a camera one profile. And then you can see it change to be uh, a, more like a camera belt pack with cams, cam love, and program. All right. And now you're, oh, you can actually probably also see in there it says camera one and, a pro, and an ID of one. So now we are making changes to, let's go edit, and we're going to see where we can make uh, detailed changes to this belt pack, not at the profile level, but at the belt pack level. And let's say for some reason, this camera operator needs to be able to latch their button. Well, there we go. Now we've given that person the ability to latch that button. So, and apply, get out of there. It's really just that easy. So, there's a lot of boilerplate work that I've kind of taken care of in my default profiles or my default uh, net settings. So maybe the next video I do will be about getting into the nitty gritty of what these things do. But uh, when you get a kit from me, it has been uh, connected party line to audio IO channels to um, creating the, the party line and then the love channel. So, it's pretty exciting. I love this Riedel stuff and I'm looking to get more and more into it. Uh, these belt packs are, they're literally built like hammers and there's just kind of no situation I wouldn't put these in. So um, I'd love to hear your questions. All right.